Hi, everyone. This is a journey to one million hotspots. I'm Sophie Kravitz. I'm with the Helion Foundation. And I think we'll start by doing a little bit more of an elaborate introduction for the three of you and what you are and about what you're doing here. Do I use this or use a microphone? Use that okay, do I don't need oh. this? Yeah. OK. Uh, hi, hello, everyone. My name is Daniel. I'm one of the co-founders of Hotspot. It is a tool to use to manage, plan, and deploy hotspots. Uh, I've been around Helium for a little bit over two years. And it's been a, such an amazing journey that we're going to hopefully talk today. Hi, everyone. I'm Jose uh, Marcelino from Rock Wireless. Rock, maybe some of you know, was the first third-party manufacturer on the Helium ecosystem. Uh, and uh, I'm a solutions architect well, around all the Helium products that Rock does. Yeah, I'm, I'm Frank Mong. I'm back, Chief Operating Officer of Nova Labs. Well, Frank, as long as you're talking, can you tell us how, what was it like in the very beginning? What were some of the challenges that Helium went through? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I know many of you know our origin story. Amir covered a little bit of it. But I, I wanted to use this chance, for, especially for folks brand new to Helium, to kind of understand how hard it was to get this started. In the very beginning, Back in 2017, after we decided, okay, we're going to try to build a blockchain into a lower WAN uh, piece of hardware or lower WAN gateway, we, we really did not know, one, how do we sell this? And two, who's really going to buy it? Because the proposition that we were talking about at the time was that we're going to create this sharing network for IoT devices and individuals, folks in the crowd here, folks watching online, you were going to buy this hardware called the Helium Hotspot, and you're going to share your internet with these little IoT sensors that you may or may not understand what they do or what the applications are. And why would you do that? Right? And the, and the proposition early days was, well, to just own part of the network, become an owner of that, and help this ecosystem grow. We really didn't know how, how big it would get or how, you know, how much value this network would be for society, and so it was very difficult to, to, to get going. And I, rem I remember distinctly when we first started like in the, in the alpha stage, when we had some prototypes, we had some of these hotspots, we gave them to our employees, like 15 or 30 of these things, and we just installed them wherever we could, in San Francisco, where our headquarters was, or around the Bay Area, where folks lived. And that, and that, was, that was all we, we did was to test the range of LoRaWAN. We, we had pilots in those days, we had pilots with companies that I can't name because they get upset when we use their brand. But we, we had these pilots with scooters and you know, sensors, and we were testing these things all around the city of San Francisco for months. And we had to get a network working. So it was just constant testing, constant, like, how do we convince people to do this? Because it wasn't, you know, and when, you, when you do something for the first time, it never works as you think. And so we just had to iterate and iterate and iterate. And that took us, I would say, about six to nine months of just iteration, both on the LoRaWAN technology side, as well as on the blockchain itself, making sure we understood how proof of coverage worked, make sure we can tweak it, make it better, make it, you know, improve on it. And that just took us getting these hotspots installed, like, practice mining, I guess, practice proof of coverage, because it didn't exist before. We're inventing it. Mm -hmm. And th that iterative process helped us learn quite a bit about the power of what this network could be. Um, and then it was figuring out, well, how do you sell this? How do you get people to buy this? And for those that were here early with us, you'll remember when we first offer a Helium hotspot, you probably saw it on the Facebook ad or Instagram ad, and you're like, oh, God, what is this? Right? But then something intrigued you about sharing the internet, sharing the network, and that triggered you to explore more. And then if you remember, during holidays, we would like give away pies. We had a pecan pie for Thanksgiving. We gave away like hot cocoa and Christmas. We celebrated Mother's Day by hey, saying, buy your mom a hot spot and get some cookies with that, hot, hot, hot spots and hot cookies. Like those were like, the things we had to do to convince people to buy Helium hotspots. And that was like how we really pushed this for the first 10,000 units. And the key for us at the end of it to unlocking everything was really to open source the technology. Not just open source the blockchain, but open source 
the hardware designs, the app interface. Like we try to make everything consumer friendly and making that available, open sourcing that, really changed everything for us. Partnering with Rack and Bobcat and, and all the partners you see on the floor, like allowing them to build on this technology, allowing them to use their expertise, which is in supply chain manufacturing um, and evolution of the hardware itself, that's, that's what changed everything. But the first 10,000 hotspots was a real struggle, like really, really struggled. To, for, for like, without the help of the community in the open source partnerships here, there's no way, there's no way we would be here now. There's no way. So I'm convinced that open sourcing was the key for us. So then for you, Jose, mm -hmm. when Rack joined the network, tell us a little bit about your journey. So when I learned about Helium, it was around March uh, 2020. Uh, I think this is when you guys started doing LoRaWAN first because yes. you had a proprietary protocol. So you changed everything, you changed all the rules. Uh, and I was doing LoRaWAN at the time, and so obviously I wanted to know what this network was about. Uh, so a few months later, I joined Rack, and uh, this was my kind of first project there. So that's where I uh, began my journey. What, what, was it, what was it like for Rack when they first started developing hotspots, getting them out into the world and convincing people that this was a good idea? Yeah, it was very new for Rack, so uh, we, we were a business-to-business -business company. I mean, people buying hotspots until then were basically businesses who wanted some coverage for their sensors. It was, it was very difficult to install. It was a very boring activity as well, and Helium made it all exciting, actually. So that, that was completely new for us. Well, one thing I forgot to mention, when we first went into this LoRaWAN ecosystem, how we ended up there was actually Rack. So Amir went on Alibaba or AliExpress and just basically looked for LoRaWAN gateways. And Rack Wireless back then sold a, a developer gateway. And so Amir, this was like 3 o'clock in the afternoon uh, Pacific Standard Time, sent an email to Rack saying, hey, I want to buy 10 or 15 of these development gateways. How soon can I get them? And Ken, the CEO, responded like by 2 a.m. When, when he woke up, because he was in China, and said, yeah, I, I'll ship them to you. Just give me your address. Like, we didn't know how to buy this stuff, and we didn't know how fast we can get it. And Ken just said, yeah, I'll ship them to you right away. They're like 200 bucks or whatever it was. And so Amir was like, yeah, just, just send it. And he just sent it. He sent us like 15 units without even getting payment. That's how it all started. And that, that's, that's where I feel like if you're trying to start a business, your response time to inquiries could just lead you to someplace great. You just never know. And Ken in China was just on it and just sent us the gear right away. Absolutely, yeah. So Daniel, how about, how about your journey? You came in with Hotspotty. When did you start Hotspotty? Or you're a co-founder, correct? Yeah. 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 When did you start and? Yeah, we, we first heard of Helium in summer 2020. I think at the time there was around 4,000 Hotspots out there. Um, I have like an engineering background in this as soon as I heard about Helium, there was like this light bulb moment. I'm like, oh my god, I really need to be into this thing. And then from there on, I spent all my time on Discord up to the point that we were early to the DIY program. Because for my previous company, for my pre previous projects, I already had LoRa gateways. I had like Raspberry Pis laying in my house. So I decided to build one. It was one of the first ones in Europe. So there was a very exciting time. And then spending all my time on Discord, talking to everyone. It was a small community then, I think. Like the first week that I joined, Helium had moved to Discord from Slack. And I spent all my days there. It's like, I was like kind of slacking my work because I was so excited just trying to build for the Helium network. And then it's when we decided, OK, let's, let's just buy some hotspots and then keep on growing. Um, up to the point that we had around 50 hotspots from Rec, uh, besides some of DIY that we had going on. And we spent most of like our the, the end, of, end of 2020, beginning of 2021, like dodging the police because it was COVID time, you had to be at home. Everybody was like bored at home. So just like duffel bags full of equipment and just like getting Uber ride, trying to like f look for police and trying to like dodge them and then going climbing roofs, spending like three, four months in the beginning of 2021, just like, just like having a great time and pulling cable. It was something that I, I miss a lot to do. And then we did that in Lisbon. At the time, there was like no hotspot there. And now so we realized how beautiful Lisbon is from there from the, the rooftops. Uh, it, was, it was such like a magical time. And that's what 
once we deployed all these initial hotspots, we realized that we had to figure out a way to actually how can we manage them, how can we improve our deployments, how we can improve our uh, rewards as well, and how can we pay everybody because you have the rewards, you have the host and everybody. And that's when Hotspot was born. Like from like, uh, from me and my other co-founder uh, background in software development, and we've been basically breathing helium ever since. Um, just give a little explanation for those who don't know what Hotspotty is. Yeah, Hotspotty, Hotspotty.net is this tool that you can use to manage and plan your hotspots. So you can, if you have one or more hotspots, it's, the, it's a great place for you to go if you actually want to bring some sanity of you around managing and understand what's happening in the Helium network. So you have the Helium Explorer. Then we build, we spend a lot of time and a lot of resources in trying to make it even better, more understandable, because we believe that understanding the the ecosystem, understanding the network, and building this community around is gonna like kickstart, like gonna help Helium get even bigger and then more um, sustainable as well. And uh, Jose, how how is Rack? Tell us. I, I think most people here do know what Rack is, but tell us how your your new products and how you're contributing to growing the network. Yeah, so Rack. I mean, we are very committed to the Helium network. This was uh, it's now our main business. Uh, we are deeply involved in the Web3 space as well. Uh, we are working on a 5G hotspot. Uh, we've, uh, we've shown that already, our all-in-one when? design. When? 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 It's always the question. Uh, end of the year, we, that's where we're looking at. Hashtag soon. Yeah, uh, end of the year. End of the year. Okay. I'm not, no promises, I mean, <laughs> but that's the date we're targeting. Uh, we also very much on the IoT side, we want to grow the IoT sensor network. Rack, that's our background. We have a lot of devices for that, and we want to help developers uh, create devices for this network. And uh, Frank, uh, let's talk about some trends. What kinds of trends are you three seeing in the network? Yeah, you know, obviously the network is growing rapidly. Thank thankfully, the supply chain issues are now behind us that we faced like the last two years, the last year and a half with COVID. Um, but what me and my team at Nova Labs have really been focused on, I would say since COVID started for about two and a half years is really usage on the network. Looking at applications, sensors, and different devices that can connect to this lower WAN network. Um, we have an entire BD and BDR team, some of who are here today in, uh, at Helium House. Um, and our objective has always been to go and find uh, potential applications and introduce them to Helium, the network itself, uh, and the entire ecosystem, and figure out how to leverage it for their applications. And I would say that two of the biggest trends uh, in that space, as we've focused heavily on it, has really been, I would say, like water management. So water metering, water leak detection, agriculture and water, but really water sensors um, has, be, has been one of the top use cases that we've seen. And then probably equally important, one in 1A, is supply chain tracking and tracing. And that's everything from drone deliveries that you saw um, but also there's a bunch of other tracking and tracing applications that we haven't talked about. I don't know if Goodyear is here today, but they should be talking about stuff soon. So like Goodyear Tires is an investor in Nova Labs and uh, they've been testing a couple of different trackers for an app for a POC that they're gonna launch and it's looking pretty good. Because I, I, I would say since I've been involved with LoRaWAN for the last five years, the types of sensors in the manufacturing of those sensors have improved quite a bit, I would say. So like Nano Things has a, a sticker sensor. That's incredible. This is incredible. And to me, that's game changing. And that's the kind of innovation that we need, I think, as a community. But again, that's like Nano Things has been around for five, six years. So it's taken them five, six years to evolve the battery technology, evolve the sensors, to get into, a, it's, it's literally paper thin, right? I mean, that's, it just takes time. And so for me, Patients, the applications are there. They're going to come. Um, but we, we, re we really just got the network to be useful, I would say, in the last six to nine months, where we're at a scale and density that you can use it anywhere now. I mean, it seems like the, the network is enabling makers to jumpstart innovation. I mean, I, I want to see this sticker. That's right. Yeah. yeah Na Nano Things has this. I don't know if they're here, but check out Nano Things. It's amazing. Um, but again, amazing tech like that just takes a long time to develop. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, yeah, and I, and I think lowering barriers is the key. That's why if you look at the network and why it's so attractive, 
is because data credits are so cheap when it comes to IoT. And I think it has to be that cheap to really encourage innovation so that it's as risk-free as, as, as we can, as low cost as we can, and as so the, the correct attributes. It just takes time. So um, Daniel, as someone who has a finger on the pulse of data, what kind of trends do you see coming up? I mean, like this, this nano technology thing is super exciting. I've seen people talk about, like, for example, the, in the tracking side of things, adding in like some kind of tracking sensors and the and the fiber of paper of a box. They just ship a box and you can have free tracking in the box that you buy on UPS. You can just like you get like a QR code on the box and then you can just follow that and you can no matter where the box is in the world, it's gonna be working for like five years because the data credit's so cheap. So that box is gonna have like a lifetime of like five years just on data credits. And also the battery, right? It doesn't use a lot of battery. Um, agriculture as well. One thing that is, I think is very important to realize on hardware development takes a lot of time. It does, it's yeah. very different than software in the sense that you can, like bigger software companies have deployments, multiple deployments a day. When you're building hardware, you build the board, you, have, you send for manufacturing, another week arrives, you test it. So it's, it's much slower. So I believe that from like, like, say like the last six to nine months, a lot of new companies are starting to build on Helium. And that's still going to take some time to get there. Mm -hmm. So I think, I believe that it's going to be exponential growth on the data usage. It's going to happen in two years from now. It's going to be very, very different from what it's right now. So I'm very excited to do it. And I firmly believe that that's what we're going to see. And Jose, anything that you're particularly excited about coming up? Uh, yeah, on the IoT side, you know, we are working with some companies around mostly water. The water industry is really interesting because you can deploy they are looking for cheap sensors for the networks uh, to improve things like sewage, uh, clean water access, and, and that type of thing. Uh, so very excited about that. Also very excited to find models where we can reward people for running these sensors as well, like what Demo is doing and the other companies. Uh, so that, that's where we're looking for. OK, and in the interest of time here, I think we're going to go to our last question, which is we're at a little bit more than 950,000 hotspots now. Um, Daniel, when are we going to hit a million? So we're on around 20,000 hotspots a month, more or less. And we're doing some like data analytics and prob probabilistics. And we think it's going to be ready at the Solana breakpoint in Lisbon. OK. And, and we're having a party at your house, right? Yes, you guys are welcome. All invited. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.